Yes, I want my seven foot recreation of Elon Musk at my doorstep tomorrow. Please. If it's not there, it's off with your head. Thank you. Oh, Amazon Prime. Oh, the camera's on? Sorry. Hey guys, it's me, Ender. I'm the creator of Chef Purple the hit YouTube series that honestly has not been a hit lately. Grade 9, it was amazing. The first episode I made, absolutely livid. I was young, hit on the scene, I, I made it. I had everything, on, I had the world at my feet. Second episode though, the sequel was bad. That's what people say. But it, this time, the sequel was bad, horrible. I tried a new edgy me, it was horrible, didn't make it anywhere, no money, nothing. Didn't get food for a month. And now episode three, recently released a month ago. I don't know if it's just me, my hunger for money, but when I got that call last night from my PA, I was done for. Hello? How many times have I told you, Johnny, not to call me at this hour? I need my beauty sleep, please. God. Wait. It's important. Wait. What? The investors have pulled out. They don't like the new video. What? I'm not making any money. Oh my God. I blew all the money from the past videos. On Halloween candy! Ah. Oh my god! What can you do, Johnny? Nothing! We don't have budget for another cooking video? Oh my god! I'm still young, I can still make videos! They don't care? Uh, okay. Meet me at the studio in two minutes. I'll be there. down to the studio I realized what we need to do we need to make a fun informative video that appeals to the kids and how better to do that by playing outside what else do kids need kid kids just love grass they've got uh, chairs outside you know who cares and kids are the biggest uh, biggest viewers on YouTube this is easy cash. This is an untapped market for me. So I decided to make it a little bit informational. But other than that, I mean, I think we've got a hit on our hands. Hey guys, it's Chef Purple Freak. And today, uh, we're not actually cooking and we're out in the great outdoors. Instead, we're actually doing a new show called Breakdown with Purple Freak. So we didn't really have budget to um, actually make a cooking show. So instead today we're gonna just be talking about the concepts and maybe next video for organic chemistry actually maybe temper some chocolate which let's be honest I'm not a good chef so I don't actually know how to do it and um I mean I before this I didn't even know like what tempering chocolate really meant but now I mean I know so I'm gonna teach you kids the best way to temper chocolate and what does tempering chocolate even mean? So, first off, what does tempering chocolate mean? Well, tempering pretty much means to improve the hardness and elasticity of a metal by reheating and then cooling it. But what does this mean for chocolate? Why would we improve the elasticity of a chocolate? Well, actually, when you temper chocolate, you're pretty much doing the same thing. You're reheating it and then cooling it, reheating it and then cooling it, because you actually want to get that nice snappy and you know glossy look on the texture uh, on the actual chocolate you know if you look at a Kit Kat you get that nice like shiny shiny look and when you snap it it's, it snaps right you eat it it's like crunchy right and that's pretty much what we're doing here and that's pretty much what uh, tempering chocolate actually means so why would we do this why does it get snappier why does it even happen well when you're doing this, you actually create beta crystals, okay? I'll go more in depth in the next segment of the video, but for now, let's say on like the path of the actual tempering chocolate. 
Uh, tempering chocolate actually really closely relates to thermodynamics. Um, or sorry, ther yeah, thermodynamics and organic chemistry. So maybe next video we'll go in, in depth with uh, organic chemistry, but for now we'll stay with uh, thermodynamics and um, uh, rates and changes or rates and properties with chemistry. So as you can see here, this is a beta uh, a alpha beta crystal, and a beta crystal really is what in what's created. Well, it's already there, but there's actually six forms of it. And when like the chocolate's actually just normally cooled down, if you like look at the crystal structure of it, it's sort of it's sort of like loose and it's not like you know really like resemble anything. It's kind of like it's like a bunch of crystal structures just tangled together. Really, that's what it is. But once you heat it up and then you uh, cool it down, heat it up, cool it down, heat it up, cool it down, you can actually get a nice, you know, texture. And the reason why we actually heat it up is that actually we want to increase its, um, like the particles inside, its rate of reaction. And we want to want to make them, got, we want to make those boys go fast, okay? And in order to do this, we actually um, heat them up at a consistent temperature because we don't want like uh we don't want the chocolate to like you know burn or anything nothing like that we just want it to go uh you know just melt and actually have like the kinetic energy of the individual chalk like the chocolate particles to actually like you know get hype you know they want to got they want to move fast and yeah so if they start moving fast that's a chance of higher collision and this relates back to collision theory and um thermodynamics and um in order to actually, if you want to melt it quick, quicker, and actually temper the chocolate faster, because it's a group, it's a long, long process. And if you want to actually do that really quick, you actually do that by um, uh, grating the chocolate and creating little shapes. I mean, it sounds weird, but in reality, chefs all around the world do this. So. Yeah. To the crystal structures of the chocolate. Um, Cho uh, chocolate actually has five, uh, six different forms of crystallization, and this is called uh, polymor polymorphism. When a compound has different crystal forms, tempering chocolate gives you form one, form two, form three, form four, form five, form six. And for us, at least, the most desirable is um, form five because it gives us that glossy texture, gives us exactly what we want. And um, the, although you may think that, hey, whatever, I have form six, who cares? It's actually a huge difference. Form 6 actually uh, looks a lot more like gray and like it diffuses light and it's something that you just don't want at all. Not, it's not the ideal chocolate at least for most of the world. I mean maybe some people like it like that but whatever. Um, yeah so that's not something we want and Form 5 is actually the most ideal and thankfully Form 5 crystallization is actually the most common and the most dominant version of it but it's not the most stable. So throughout time it would actually sort of lessen like it'll, it'll actually go above to a more stable form which is from six or over time and we don't want from six so what do we do well actually we add um some co uh, cocoa like additives like uh this right here and um that helps preserve its uh form and actually you know keeps the chocolate tasting good like fresh if you will 